turn to Commissioner Larry Johnson, and I'm also going to yield the gavel for a moment upon conclusion. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. What I wanted to bring up is just a couple of items uh, that we had in uh, Washington, D.C. I had a chance to go there to help fight for our county resources and, and information. And I want to make sure that the, the public know, especially DeKalb County, uh, there's some, some bills that really impact us that you really need to be aware of and how they impact us in our county. One is that I want to mention is the Medicaid Fiscal Accountability Regulation. Uh, this was proposed earlier this year. But basically, this proposal will look at rule to amend the federal, state, and local partnership for financing Medicaid. Uh, this is very important because Grady Hospital is funded by a lot of county resources. And so now as a federal ch change is trying to occur, that would basically take about $60 million from Grady Hospital. And you know that would cost, cost us, the county, $20 million. So it's very important that we understand. So we've been, I've been up there. Uh, focusing on this issue around Medicaid, fiscal accountability. The other issue is uh, that once you become an inmate in our county jail, you lose all of your Medicaid benefits. Once you go into our juvenile detention center, you, you, you lose your child health insurance benefits. And once a veteran goes into our jails, they lose their vet veterans benefits. And so part of what we're doing at the, at the national level is to make sure that we can make sure that inmates do not lose their benefits because mental health, a lot of our inmates in our jail have mental health issues. They seem to, tend to be in there longer. And if you have no continuity of care or no coordination of your services, you lose your benefits. Guess what? You will end up back in that jail and the county taxpayers will continue to foot that bill. Uh, and so we're working on the Medicaid Exclusion Act to get so that our folks who are incarcerated do not lose their benefits in our, in our area. Uh, there are a couple of bills that are being proposed, the Equity and Pretrial Coverage Act of 2019, restoring health benefits for justice-involved individuals. And so we are hoping that these companion pieces can go forward. But in the meanwhile, it has been proposed uh, by uh, President Trump in his 2021 budget, which is to give these folks who are in jail, they will not lose their benefits for at least six months. And so this gives time for them to get um, in trials and all those things. Well, right now you lose them when you get arrested. And remember, we're talking about the uh, constitutional fifth, fifth clause in the 14th that you're innocent until proven guilty and uh, that you need to have your benefits because you have not been convicted of anything. So I want to make sure you all know uh, that those are issues that are at a national level that we need to make sure we continue to fight for. Uh, those. Uh, unfunded mandates will come to us and make things uh, more unaffordable for the county and also for the folks who are in our community. I also want to thank uh, the folks who attended our Renaissance initiative that we had uh, the other week. Uh, and we had some great speakers. We had Denise Brown, the daughter of James Brown. We had Danita uh, Hathaway from Donnie Hathaway. And we had Isaac Hayes, uh, daughter as well to talk about the music industry. And I want to thank the Grammy Association who has some great quality acts uh, that we talked about the history of music and the African-American uh, culture and how they have in invested in and have made music what it is today. We also had our small business network forum that we do every month. This month we focus on business plans and folks who want to open up their own business, uh, please come on out. I want to congratulate uh, groundbreaking for Oakhurst Medical Center. They now have um, uh, moving in where the old Oak uh, Candler Road Presbyterian Church would be. It's a $15 million facility, and it's going to be uh, at 1706 Candler Road. Thank you, presiding officer, for attending that. It's going to be good because as you work on the coronavirus and you deal with those issues, your clinics and your community health center is going to play a very key role because everybody's going to try to rush to the hospital but your community health centers and Board of Health are going to have to be first-line responders to help us as we deal with this virus because you will not have enough emergency rooms or beds in hospitals. So you have to have a front line. That's why Oakhurst is important and our Board of Health is important as we deal with this issue head on. I want to thank our staff who attended East Conley Community Meeting, uh, Kings Park Meeting as well. We also attended, I think, one of the, one of the best early learning centers in our community on Midway Road, which is Scottdale. 
Glad to see it come to our district in South DeKalb and making a difference in our community. We did host another winter carnival. This time it was held at the South DeKalb Mall. A great turnout. I want to thank our census staff and what they're doing to get the word out to making sure that we can get areas of opportunity. We did the a Plaza a La Fiesta. We'll be, we're trying to hit all the districts, so make sure we can spread the word. And next time we'll be in District 5, and we're going to team up with the school system, and so we can do it part of the school system and what they're doing around parent engagement and, and make those things happen. We also attended the birthday celebration of our Bishop Miles Fowler, great celebration and a uh, great man of God who's done some great work impacted our community and had a chance to speak at we're creating census Sundays and so I'm trying to go to as many uh, churches as we can we'd also left that and attended New Piney Grove and talked about um, just the issues around getting folks signed up for the census so we're trying to get all churches to put um, the census count on your digital sign or on your sign that, that people can drive by and see this is another great opportunity to bring awareness to our census and where we are we will be receiving in the mail on the 14th to the 24th your actual um, uh, digital number that you can do it online. Uh, and, and the good thing about this is 95% of the homes can now do it online if they choose to do it. And we're trying to stress that in, in light of what we're going through uh, with the virus. So you don't have to come out and make those things. You can do it online and make sure you fill it out uh, because one of the things about when you deal with diseases of this nature, you want to make sure you have a proper count because the census helps us plan hospital beds. It helps us track diseases and transmission. It also helps us fund our community health centers and boards of health, and it also funds Medicaid and Medicare. So if you undercount it, guess what happened? You don't get the proper funds to your community. So I've tried to make it relatable to all of us as we deal with different uh, real-time issues that pop up. Last but not least, I had a chance to um, talk to an administrator for the Federal Highway uh, Administration in D.C., and this is like the second in command after our Secretary of uh, uh, Transportation. So we will be bringing them uh, to the cab to talk about the trucking industry, and I found out they have a program for young people who want to go in the trucking industry, and they also have federal assistance to help us uh, with trucks who are in, on our highways so we can free up our police department who may, may have to look at uh, trucks and now we have trucks that are parking along our entryways at 285 and I-20 because of the requirements that they have to, they only can drive a certain amount of time. And so we're now looking at that requirement because it's impacting our quality of life, but seeing what the federal government can do to help us to alleviate that in our, our county roads. So we look forward to seeing you tonight at our, our showcase for African American businesses, our third annual one. Starts at 10, 6 o'clock uh, with just a regular program reception. At 7 o'clock, the program starts at Porter Sanford Performing Arts Center. Please come on out if you're interested in opening up your own business, revolving loan funds, the LSBE program, and uh, learning about the side the cab and economic development incentives. And it's a great turnout. We had last year over 300 businesses. And so I want to continue to try to spread the word to make sure that we stay as connected as possible uh, to our business community in our community. So thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer.